So that's the process that we're going to take a look at now. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if this is a computer uh, system, we generally do the same thing. If we had something like QuickBooks, it would basically give our beginning balance. And it, then we would take our bank statement and we're just going to tick and tie everything off. And so uh, anything I see over here, I'm going to say, there it is. It cleared the bank at 2-1. Here it is over here. It cleared our books. It was still outstanding as of the end of January. Now it has cleared. That's good. Then we got the 500. I'm going to see if it, I can find it over here. 500 on this side. I see the 500 deposit on this side. Therefore, it has cleared. I'm going to check that off. So here's the 420. Here's the 420. Once again, we wrote it on February 20th. It cleared on February 21st. These are deposits. We would expect them to clear within three days. Uh, realistically, at this point, probably sooner than that, probably like a day, <laughs> they should they should be in there if they're a deposit. Checks, on the other hand, typical to have them be longer than that. Here's the 510. Here's the 510. So we've checked all those off. Let's take a look at the other side of it. And we have the check. In this case, it cleared on 2-2. Check number 5005 or 1005. And in this case, we wrote it on January 23rd. Notice we have a longer time frame between when we wrote it and when it clears. That's going to be typical with checks. If checks are outstanding for a longer time frame, not, not a, a problem usually. That's usually normal. So then we're going to have the 1002 here. We wrote it on the 31st. It was outstanding as of the end of last month. It now has cleared in this month, in February. And then we have a, a check that we wrote for 75 on February 10th. It has now cleared on February 13th. Here's a check for 250. And uh, we wrote it on February 12th. It's cleared on uh, February 15th. So we've tied everything out now. Now we've found everything on the bank that we could on our uh, books. If there's something except for, of course, these two transactions down here, the 80 and the 2, those are not on our books. And the general rule is going to be this. If it's on the bank statement and it's not on our books, then we probably have to fix our books. Now, the exception to that is what often people think of the reason of doing a bank reconciliation. And that is, what if the bank made an error? 